Hello everyone, let's look at this equation here. We are going to solve this equation from negative infinity to infinity. And since we are not restricting the interval for the solutions for this equation, we are going to get infinitely many solutions for this equation. And so to start, we are going to just look at the equation and see if the trig function is isolated on one side of the equation. And as you can see here, it is. Right, the sine of 2x is isolated on the left side of the equation. And there is nothing that's added to this function or subtracted from this function or uh, multiplied by this function. And so what we can do right now is to start writing down what angles, what angles that we have here that we put inside the sine function will give us negative one. And this negative one here tells us that the angle that we are getting that we are going to plug into the sine function to produce this negative one would be a quadrantal angle. So let's think about which quadrantal angle will actually give us negative one when we plug that into the sine function. So let's just draw, do some scratch work right here. Let's just draw a XY plane, okay? When we say quadrantal angle, we are saying that the angle is actually on an axis. And so this is the y axis, this one is the x axis. Okay, so now if we look at those four key points on the unit circle, so let's just draw a unit circle on here. Let me see. Okay, so let's say this is the unit circle. And then now if we look at those four key points on here, so this point right here, this is one zero. This point here, it's zero, one. And then the point at the angle of 180 is going to be negative one, zero. And then this point at the bottom, which is which corresponds to the angle of 270, would be zero, negative one. So now, <clears throat> because this is a unit circle, and we know that the x value and the y value for those points will actually correspond to the cosine and the sine values that we have here. And so for the x value, then that corresponds to the cosine. And then for the y value, that gives you the sine. And so now our goal here is to pick the point that when we plug that angle, right, the corresponding angle into this sine function right here, that will give us negative one. And so as you can see here, the only point that is giving us negative one is when we plug in the angle of 270 degree here. As you can see here, which is this point because this Y value will give us the sine value, right? And so that means the angle that we want, it's going to be what? Three pi over two or 270 degree. So let's write it down here. Yeah, so we have that. The angle, in this case, the angle would be whatever that's inside the sine function. So it will be 2x. And we say that the 2x is equal to 3 pi over 2. Okay, because we picked this point, right? So, and this point corresponds to the angle of 3 pi over 2. If we're talking about an angle that's from 0 to 2 pi, then this is the angle that we are going to pick. But remember that because we are not restricting the interval for the solutions, that means we can also include other uh, coterminal angles of this angle right here. So how do we get the next one? How do we get the next one? How do we get a larger angle than this one that's coterminal with this 3 pi over 2? We go one full circle and then come back to this location here. So that means we're adding 2 pi to this angle to get the next angle. And when we're adding 2 pi, then we are going to get 7 pi over 2. How do we get 7 pi over 2? Let's just think about this. If we, if we, let's just do some scratch work right here. So let's say if you take the angle 3 pi over 2, and then you add 2 pi. And do you see what's going on here? We are actually adding 360, right? So you are having four pi over two. Why do we get four pi over two? Because we need to get the common denominator. And so if you just add it, then you are gonna get um, seven pi over two. So that's the next 
coterminal angle that we are getting. That's just larger than this 3 pi over 2. And then actually you can just keep adding 2 pi and then you will just keep getting coterminal angles of this 3 pi over 2. And then when you plug those angles all into this sine function, then you are going to get negative 1. So how do you get the next one? You just add another 2 pi to the 7 pi over 2. In this case, you're adding 4 pi over 2 to it, right? So you're going to get 11 pi over 2. Now, as you can see here, based on the pattern, it's going to what add 4 to the coefficient of the pi in the numerator each time, right? And the bottom doesn't change. And so it will be 3 to the 7, and then 7 to the 11, and then 11 to, if you add 4 more, then you are going to get 15 pi. And so on, following that, following that pattern. Now, those positive angles are not the only angles that we would um, that we would plug into the sine function and then produce a negative one. We can actually also get negative angles, angles with negative measures. That means we are going to we are going to do what we are going to go backward. So we are going to measure the angle in the clockwise direction. So starting with the 3 pi over 2, if we go backward, then we are going to subtract the 2 pi so that we can come back to this angle. So that means we are going to get 3 pi over 2, okay? And then you subtract the 2 pi. In this case, it would be, what, 3 pi over 2 minus 4 pi over 2. And so, if you go in the positive direction, then you're adding 4 pi over 2 each time. But if you are going in the negative direction, then you are going to subtract 4 pi over 2 each time. So in this case, you are going to get what? Negative pi over 2. So that means if you are going the negative direction, then you, you are going to get negative pi over 2. So that's another one that you can get. And then... Just imagine that you just keep subtracting 2 pi or subtracting negative 4 pi over 2. Then each time for the coefficient of the numerator, you are going to just subtract 4. And then you are going to get negative 5 pi over 2. Just keep going, following the pattern. Then you are going to get negative 9 pi over 2 and so on. Okay, so that's the, um, if you just keep listing all the angles, then you are going to get um, all the solutions that you're going to get here. Um, we actually want to come up with a general form for this. So instead of listing all the angles, we can try to come up with a general form. The way that we do it is that we pick one of the angles, it's a base angle here. So the left-hand side is still just the 2x, right? And then you just pick the 3 pi over 2 as a base angle. It actually doesn't really matter which one that you pick, but usually I will pick the one that's between 0 and 2 pi. So I pick the 3 pi over 2 and then put it right here. Okay, so how do you write down the general form? As you know that if we are going in the positive direction, you are going to be adding 2 pi each time, right? Just keep adding 2 pi's and then you can get the next angle. Or if you're going in the negative direction, you will just keep subtracting the 2 pi's, okay? So in this case, you are actually adding or subtracting a multiple of 2 pi, an integer multiple of 2 pi. So in this case, we are going to just add 2n pi, okay? And actually, you can think of it as n, which is an integer, and then times the 2 pi. So that would be the um, inter um, multiple integer multiple of 2 pi in this case. I think I just lost track of what I was going to say. Okay, now, yeah, because I was looking at the n and then times the 2 pi. So n is going to be uh, integer. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Okay, so uh, instead of writing n times 2 pi, we can simply just write 2 n pi. Okay, and then of course we need to specify that n is an integer. And so n is what? n is an integer, then we can use, use this notation right here to indicate that's the integer. This z right here, um, we use that to denote the set of integers.
And so this tells you that n belongs to the set, so that means n is an integer. Is n is an element to the set. Okay, so now um, let's try to plug in some numbers into n, and then you will see why this formula or this general formula will work. Um, let's say if you plug in zero, so zero is an integer, right? So if you plug in zero in here, zero times anything is zero. So you're just going to get three power of two. So that's going to give us this angle here, three power of two. And then if you plug in the one in here, then you are adding two pi. And so as you have seen here with the calculation, if you're adding two pi to three pi over two, then you are going to get seven pi over two. So when n equals one, then you are going to get the seven pi over two right here. When you plug in n equals two, then two times two, you get four, four pi. So you're adding four pi to the three pi over two. So to add four pi to the three pi over two, then you are going to get 11 pi over two. So when n equals two, that will give you this one. You see what's going on here? I can actually do the labeling right here. Um, if we just go back here and then do some of the labeling. It actually, it's that for this three pi over two, that's when n is equal to zero. And then the seven pi over two, that's when n is equal to one. And then the 11 pi over two, that's when n is equal to two. And then the next one, of course, will be n equals three and so on, right? And actually, I want to also label the other, um, the negative angles as well, right? So if we do that, well, actually, that's not a good idea to move this one, but, but then I can just move them separately. It will be easier this way. Because I need more space, I should have thing a little bit more careful here, even though I can still write it. There. Okay, so let's just put that there. And then as you can see here, we are going to uh, have n equals negative one for this one. How do we know that it's n equals negative one? Because if we put negative one into n, then we are going to get negative two, right? So we're subtracting the two pi from the three pi over two. So that means we have three pi over two minus two pi. That will give us negative pi over two, So which is this angle. So the same thing here, just keep going with the negative n values. So that's how that works, okay? But that's not finished. This is not the final answer here because when we are solving an equation, we are finding x values, right? We are solving for x. We're finding x values that will satisfy this equation. What we have right here, this is an expression for 2x, not for x. So <clears throat> one more step here is that we need to divide both sides by two so that you can get the final answer. So if we're dividing by two, then what do we get here? That would be easy. If you multiply by one half, you are going to get three pi over four and then plus, and then if you divide by two, then you are going to get n pi. And then that will be your final answer. Okay, and then we can actually just, just copy this then you can finally just box your whole answer together. So that's the general formula that we want for this equation. Yeah, so basically if you plug in um, <clears throat> three pi over four plus n pi where n is an integer, you plug in any of those angles into this equation, it will give you like one. So that general formula gives you all possible solutions that you will have for this equation on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please subscribe my channel and then give me some support. And then please give me a like and leave me some comments. And also please check out my other videos. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.